pace now, drawing into the, the final few laps. John Surti is still in the second position in car two. Jack, uh, John Surti is there in car two. In second place. The early leader led for 30 laps. And then Brabham got the, uh, the lead right down at uh, Creek Corner. Third place getter, about 34 seconds behind the uh, leading two, Bruce McLaren of New Zealand. It's quite uh, an unusual thing to see three different makes of cars in the uh, places in such a race as this. We have Jack Brabham in the lead in the Brabham Climax, John Surtees in the Lola Climax, and in third place at this moment, is the uh, Cooper Climax of Bruce McLaren. David Mackay in car five still holding fourth place. to go now. Four laps. We've completed 41 laps. And four laps of this 101 and a quarter miles, 27th Australian Grand Prix. And we'll have to uh, just watch very closely now. Uh, watch these cars because uh, with just so few laps to go, we'll have to try and uh, make sure we uh, follow Jack Brabham for you on uh, the last lap. Jack Brabham and John Surtees are both of them together. There they go, the two of them ha having passed over the northern crossing. There's Jack Brabham, just on the fourth lane. And there's John Surtees, still within striking distance as he rounds Polo Corner, accelerates up the short straight towards Ledger. Still not very much distance uh, separating these two cars. Jack Brabham has three laps to go. Three laps to go, and so now has John Surtees. Three laps to go. These are the leading two, have been right throughout uh, the entire 42 laps so far. Third place to the causeway, Bruce McLaren. Bruce McLaren, uh, about half a lap behind these uh, other two now, almost half a lap. A fair way behind them. In third position, Jack Brabham and John Surtees have about two and a half laps to go. Bruce McLaren now with three laps to go. Here's the, le the uh, leader, Jack Brabham, in car four. Brabham lapping at 140.2, keeping very consistent now. That equals the fastest time uh, established earlier by Surtees in the 34th lap. At 140.2 equals the fastest time. Set by Surtees in the 34th lap. Brabham. 
coming down now to Ledger Corner. And after he makes this turn to come down pit straight, we'll have just two laps to go. There's Jack Rabin, uh, just passing Rex Davison as they come down pit straight. There's Jack Rabin with victory inside in car four over the western crossing. They pass through the right-hander Homestead onto Hume Strait. There we see him stringing away down that uh, beautiful piece of straight track, which is as smooth as a billiard table. Now There's no doubt about that this is going to be uh, a most popular win if, uh, of course, we're assuming that Jack Rabham will conclude this race now without any uh, trouble at all, and it certainly will be a very popular win indeed. He's a, a great champion here to the crowd, and I'm sure that he will certainly be thrilled. Coming now to the Northern Crossing, and having a little over one lap to go. Just um, possibly wondering what could possibly rob him of this uh, victory. But the um, way he's going, he's driven a magnificent race from the back of the grid, which of course uh, doesn't make uh, the driving situation any easier for him. But there he is, perfectly calm and relaxed. Jack Lavin and Car 4, the leader. Well, there we are with the two times world champion in 1959. And 1960, Jack Rabham on his final lap going down Hume Street. And barring a, a last moment um, mechanical failure, this will be his race today. Jack Brabham now, coming to the Northern Crossing. He hasn't very far to go now. Coming over the Northern Crossing for the last time. The crowd gathering excitedly and expectantly now, waiting to uh, cheer Brabham as he comes down the straight. Ledger Corner. Here he comes, getting ready. The crowd starting to cheer him already. Mm -hmm. That uh, rocket you heard, that noise in the background, was to signify the end of the race with Jack Brabham first and uh, John Surtey second. And Bruce McLaren, there's Bruce McLaren in car 10, who will be third. Well, the tremendous effort on the part of Jack Brabham, who drove an extremely clever race. He uh, allowed his car to settle down and weigh up the whole situation. Undoubtedly helped by um, efficient pit signalling, uh, Jack successfully took uh, John Surtees apparently just when he wanted to, and I'd say that he was driving well within the car's capabilities. And here comes Bruce McLaren over the finish line to take third place. Now picture now uh, car number five, the second of the Brabham's, third of the Brabham's rather, driven by David Mackay, who will finish comfortably in fourth place taking the ledger corner for the last time. 
very beautifully driven the whole race. Um, David Mackay adding to be back to the leader. And from there he crosses the line to take fourth place. Well, now Norman May is ready to talk with the winner, Jack Brabham. So it's over to Norman May. Well, congratulations to you, Jack, on your first uh, win of Eric Fun. Oh, thank you very much. This thank is you. your second Australian Grand Prix, Jack. Is this a different sort of a car? From uh, your, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, you would almost call this an Australian-made car. In fact, um, it's a car that we've built in England with one of my own organisations, built up by many Australians, such as Ron Toronak and... Uh, uh, Peter Wilkins and quite a team of very good chaps over there and since I've been here I've had quite a flap of course <laughs> and uh, my mechanics have done a wonderful job preparing the car they certainly haven't been to bed since the car arrived in Australia which certainly wasn't very long ago and uh, it's certainly a wonderful pleasure to win here today. What happened yeah. Jackie? You didn't even take part in the parade of drivers before the, the race? Well I'm afraid I was working on the car right up to the last minute and uh, it just wasn't possible to get out there before the just been prior to the start of the race and uh, it's been like that ever since the car got here had arrived uh, by boat in Melbourne and then was had to be flown up to Sydney and it's certainly been a panic but it was worth it. You seem to take it very easily in the first uh, couple of minutes of the race. Well the car was very new of course and uh, I virtually hadn't driven it very far and had to of course run the car well, in. the race starting so right. I Even the Australian Grand Prix winner can't hold the program up here at Warwick Farm. No, and it's certainly a very nice trophy too. Yes, what uh, do you think of it, Jack? Wonderful, actually. Uh, it's been an ideal one for a mechanic, actually. <laughs> but uh, I know Stan very well, Stan Coffey, who presented the uh, trophy, and it's certainly a credit to him to come to light with such a lovely trophy, and I'm very pleased to have won it. There's a bit of coincidence in your win today, Jack. This is similar to your victory at Sandown last year when you beat John Surtees in a similar place. Yes, that's correct, yes. Well, Jack, what about the future? You're coming back again to race at Warwick Farm? Yes, I certainly am next year. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing you. Congratulations again. A great win. A very popular one for Australia. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, okay. Jack. Tim, what was so special about Jack Brabham as a driver? I think the special thing for Jack Brabham compared to um, his colleagues of the day, Sterling Moss and the, the likes, was that Jack uh, was an engineer, understood the cars. Um, I heard Sterling Moss uh, recently talking about uh, Brabham and saying Brabham could take an engine out of the car and rebuild it and put it back in, where Sterling probably wouldn't uh, uh, know how to even take the engine cover off to get to the engine. But um, he was... Um, that was really his, his speciality, uh, very uh, good at setting up cars, understanding the e engineering of race cars. But how did that make him a, a faster driver? Well, um, he was already fast, mm. perhaps it didn't make him a faster driver, but he was able to set his car up so it was easy to drive, um, and in doing that then you can be consistent, um, and you're not fighting the car, easier to drive. Um, so um, that uh, took him right to the front of the field. And, uh, and I, gu I guess winning Formula Ones, did that make him something of a role model? Did, it, did that bring on a whole generation, inspire a generation of, of younger drivers? Well, it certainly inspired a lot of Australians, inspired uh, uh, myself uh, and I think Alan Jones as well. Um, um, any, really any leading sportsman inspires uh, uh, inspires the young ones, so whether it's motor racing, golf, tennis, athletics. Um, but uh, he, was, he was certainly something special, uh, Jack. Well, he still is. He's still going strong at 80-odd. Well, let's take a look at this profile of the great man from ABC's Sports Classics series. The story of Jack Brabham is a story of achievement. From a simple beginning in the suburbs of Sydney, he rose to great heights in the highly competitive world of international motor racing. As he grew up, he developed a keen interest in motor cars, not only in sitting behind the wheel and driving, but also in what makes them go. He began as a speedway driver and then graduated to road racing. By the mid-1950s, Brabham and his pupil Bristol were a familiar...